the guy who is the defense minister, Shoigu, is he's arguably one of the least competent people on the planet. Uh, but he's a friend of Putin, and so he's been able to milk the Defense Department for everything. Uh, best guess is that he has taken a third of the budget himself for procurement, and his flunkies have taken another third. So very little gets to the military itself. So it's corruption. Huge corruption. And that means no training. Or if, the tra if there is training, it's basically a parade. And when you're using a force that can only supply by rail... You're completely dependent upon trucks for local distribution, and that's why the Ukrainians went after the trucks with the um, all the javelins that they got early in the war. They didn't really go after tanks. They went after the trucks, and they've destroyed roughly 2,000, maybe 2,500 of them, and that has reduced the Russian military to going back to Russia, confiscating city buses and literally Scooby-Doo vans, and bringing them back to the front. And Think of a Scooby-Doo van. Now fill it full of artillery shells. You know, every time you hit a bump, ah, and that is their primary ammo supply system now because the rail system into Crimea got blown up, the Kerch Bridge, and what's going into the east is all under artillery range. So they have to use truck and they're just not very good at it. Now, for a lot of people, the big fear is that if Russia, start, Russia starts really getting desperate, then they use nukes. Sure. And it, it would have to be very desperate. Um, I have never... I've not been as concerned about the nuclear question as some folks, because there's really only four scenarios. Uh, scenario one is the Russians consider throwing one against the United States. But we've made it very clear from our intercepts and our sharing of information with the media that we know exactly where Putin is at any time. We're listening to his phone calls. We're reading his emails. And so he now knows very clearly that if he throws a nuke at the United States, we're going to throw one not at Russia. We're going to throw one at him. And there's no version of this where he survives. So he has tamped down the rhetoric quite a bit since last March. Uh, option number two, nuking Ukraine. That doesn't make sense. They want to occupy Ukraine. You don't want to have your troops in a place that's a radioactive wasteland. There may have been a case last year for nuking Poland and Berlin and Stockholm uh, in order to disrupt the weapons flows into Ukraine. But after the battles of Izium and Kyrgyzstan, the Ukrainians have more Russian gear now than they know what to do with. It's going to take them months to bring that all online. There's a lot of deferred maintenance that needs to be done. And so disrupting the weapons flows no longer is a critical issue because the weapons are already there. So the only scenario I can see where the Russians would seriously consider nukes is if Ukraine doesn't simply win, but decides to carry the fight across the border into Russia proper. In that scenario, where the very existence of the Russian government is threatened, that would probably change the math. But I don't find that likely without a significant shift in mindset in Washington, because we're, we're not just providing the Ukrainians with the weaponry and the ammo. We're providing them with the intelligence and most of the steps of the kill chain. Without that, the weapons are of limited usefulness, especially at long range. And the Ukrainians have no desire to rupture that relationship. So we're talking about a theoretical that is at, at a minimum seven months away, probably further. This whole thing is such a terrifying conflict. Mm. Being that Russia is a nuclear superpower and the history of Russian wars, I mean, there's such a long history of sacrifice and death. And they have, it's like, they're accustomed to it in a way. Oh, we can do better than that. We can make you a lot more depressed. Okay. So uh, <laughs> let me give you two things. Uh, number one, the Russians are relatively casualty immune. They, they fight in an area where they fight with numbers. They've never been technologically advanced versus their peers. Uh, they've always just thrown bodies at it. So there has never been a conflict in Russian history where they have backed out without first losing a half a million men. We're at about 100,000 now. We have a long way to go before the Russian military breaks. So the Russians have lost roughly 100,000? That's the best guess. At How point. many Ukrainians have been lost? Probably about a third of that. But that is a third in terms of military forces. In terms of civilians, we really don't know. Uh, it could be as much as 250,000 at this point. We just don't know. Really? Yeah. Well, it's, the data exists on the other side of the front line. All we know are about what has happened in the territories that have been liberated. And if you think of things like Bucha and Izium, uh, German radio intercepts told us as far back as May that there were at least 70 places behind Russian lines that had suffered massacres like Izium, I'm sorry, like, um, like Bucha. And when we've had additional liberation since then, it corroborates that general assessment.
so <sighs> well so that that's piece one okay. that you can be a little depressed about the piece two uh the russians see this as an existential fight for their survival they feel if they don't get those blocking positions they're doomed and they're probably right but we now know that the Russians are fighting so badly. They're doing much worse than the Iraqis did in 1992. That if, really? Oh, yeah. If we had a direct fight now between NATO and Russia, it would be 1,001 casualties. And I don't know anyone at the Defense Department who's happy about that. Because if the Russians see this as an existential conflict and they know they can't hold a match to NATO, then nukes are their only option. So... The primary reason why everyone in the West has sh gotten shoulder to shoulder on this is they know that if Ukraine falls and Poland's next, there will be a direct fight, the Russians will lose, and then there will be a general nuclear exchange. So there's plenty of really solid reasons to root for the Ukrainians on this one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, when this whole thing broke out what what do you think the that you think the russians expected ukraine to just give up absolutely that's what happened in 2014 for the most part and what are the possible scenarios for russia i mean if it it seems like they're completely committed to this they are and if they don't win it the the russian position is that our demographic structure is, is in such diseased and aged and terminal decline that the Russian state will be turning the lights off sometime between 2050 and 2070 anyway. Anyway. Yeah. The, uh, th they've had a series of big melon scoops out of their birth rate throughout the history. Uh, World War I, World War II, the collectivizations under Stalin, Brezhnev's uh, mismanagement, Khrushchev's mismanagement, uh, the post-Cold War collapse. And a lot of these stack on top of each other. And the biggest one stacked on top of the post-Cold War collapse. So there are more Russians in their 50s than their 40s and their 30s and their 20s and teens. And then they lie about the data of the teenagers on down. Uh, which means that there, isn't, there aren't enough Russians have, that have been born in the last 30 years to carry the ethnicity forward much farther. And so they're thinking if they can forward position their military and plug those gaps now with their last generation of young people, then they can kind of die on their own terms. 50 years from now. Have but, they really thought about this in that term? Like, yeah. This, this, one way or another, this is the end of Russia. The question is whether it dies in the long term on their terms or in the shorter term when they're completely unmoored. Because if they fail to secure those borders, then they've got a 2,000 mile open border with countries they consider to be hostile. And they have no way of moving troops around in a way that would allow them to defend it. 